Good evening and welcome to Elliot Astro Imaging. And this is the 19th episode of the broadcast of the series. And I want to thank everybody for watching tonight as we have a great night scheduled. I asked everybody tonight to see if anybody can give me objects in the sky. I did not get any responses. Looking at guiding tonight, this is running the best I have ever seen. Declination has not moved. We are absolutely golden. Knock on wood, we are golden for, for guiding. And tonight in this section, so apparently where we were shooting before, we were not looking good at all. And we were trying to shoot the Pac-Man Nebula, did not work the way I wanted it to. So we decided to just say, scrap that, that did not work the way, the way it should have been. So tonight we're going to shoot the Seder Complex again in Hydrogen Alpha. As we did not get enough of exposure time. And since this part of the sky worked so well before, we're going to try it again tonight. And if guiding like this stays the way it does all the way through the night, we might be able to pull out 15-minute images because we're running right now at 0.6 for arc seconds of error. And I've never seen that that steady for here. Um what I did was for aligning, I made sure that I increased the exposure time and I made sure that I got that absolutely dead on for declination. And it's running at 0.3 arc seconds, and that is incredible. I'm, I'm flabbergasted. That's how amazing it is. So we should be in great, great shape. Uh, I am running an image right now of 10 minutes on the Seder complex. So looking at this, we should be in great shape. The stars should look really good. The nebulosity should be fantastic. Just hopefully it stays like this with right ascension and whatnot. I may have to play with right ascension just a slight bit. But we are looking really, really good. I reinstalled the Orion G3 software. It's still not working the way I want it to, but I'm still going to run a planner on it anyways just to see. Uh, focus, I got to retouch it, but with guiding like this, I'm not going out there and I'm not touching it. So it is what it is. And if, it, if it's a little bit off on focus, because we're doing really well and... I'm going to take 540. We'll take a 480 seconds exposure on this one and see what we get. If it's good, great. If it's not, um, I'm not worried about it because ultimately I want to try to see if I can use a mosaic panel combining the Seder complex and the Crescent Nebula. And I'm going to pull that up on uh, Starry Night in a little bit here just to see what it looks like. But we got both cameras running right now currently. so. And they're doing really well. I, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just amazed. I'm absolutely amazed at what this is going to do and how, and how good guiding is. And I'm glad that we got footage of this so I can keep looking back at this and say how awesome that is. Because I'm running on a CG5, so it's not a Paramount. It's nothing that I have to, you know, it's not a C Gem or a Vixen or anything like that. The higher amount, it's a CG5, and it's looking great. I got out here at about 9.30 when it was still somewhat dusk out, so I can not only see the polar scope where it has the reticle, but I could also see Polaris at the same time and actually magnify it two times to get it exactly where I want it to be on that circle. So, And I'll post a picture of it after the podcast, but we're looking really good. We're still at 0.7. Uh, let me increase this here to go eight and see what it looks like. We're still at point eight. Let me try point. Let me try four. That's not bad at all. I mean, that's looking at one arc second. I mean, I'm I'm pretty happy with that. And usually I do it at sixteen. Let me try four hundred here. That's not bad. That, that is not bad at all. I can take that. So 
we're looking really good for a 10 minute image for this. If this keeps up the way it's supposed to, it's falling in line in that one arc second, as you can see right here. Um, that's where the bullseye is. And I can actually bring this. There we go. So that's two arc seconds and it's hovering right around one to one and a half arc seconds. And that's not bad at all. You would be, you would barely be able to see it. As you can see that that crosshairs, has just barely moved. I picked the center of that star, and it is just focusing dead center on that. So I am extremely happy with that. We're actually now at one arc second, so we actually we've gone up just a slight bit, but now we're slowly moving our way back down. So let's go to the image and take a look and see what we have. I'm going to go to the entire screen here. We have the image session here. We're at 54%, so we're at about... Five and a half minutes right now on, on the 10 minute image here in Hydrogen Alpha. I'm hoping this is going to be awesome because I would like to get probably three or four of these or to start off a night. I've never had a night where I started off to get 10 minute images. Usually it's four minutes to start, then six, then eight, and then 10, depending on how guiding is going. Um, for weather, the way it is out there, the winds have died down a little bit. They were between seven miles an hour ish. The humidity is just horrible out there. Um, the the <laughs> the temperature this afternoon reached about close to ninety. Um, with humidity, it was probably with the heat index was probably more like ninety five. Um, the sun went down. The humidity is still outrageous. So the temperature, I would probably say, is about 80 degrees, possibly. And then with humidity, it feels like it's almost 90. So setting up was a little tough, but I got through it, and we're doing great. So let me pull up the wonderful Orion guider, because this one, the Orion camera, I took a five-second image, and you could see that some of the stars are not exactly great. I did not uh, do the focus. I may touch it after I get an image. As you can see, some of these stars are a little off. But again, with this one, it's such a small sensor. I'll see what it looks like. And then if it looks somewhat decent, I may, t I may touch up on the focus, but not horrible. We're still sitting at 0.67, so I'm not going to touch anything. 0.4 and 0.77. So not going to touch anything with that. So we're at 74%. And once this image finishes, then I should be able to see where we got, where we, you know, where we, you know, where we are in the sky. I tried to get it as best as I could, as I had Seder on the left-hand side. Seder is the star, and pull up just the actual image here for here. So this way, everybody will be able to see it here. There we go. And I'm going to pull up a uh, starry night right now while this is running and doing what it's got to do. And then for panel wise, you'll be able to see where I'm going to try to connect the two because I've gotten the crescent and I got Seder and I'm trying to get that middle section. So this way I can be able to combine the, the three together. So you'd be able to follow that lot invisible line on the constellation. So right now we're at 86% right now, 87. So we're almost there. Still pulling up starry night. I'm actually going to get to where we're actually shooting right now. All right. So, we're at 97 percent cross your fingers let's see what it looks like all right it is done now it's gonna buffer i'm gonna go to color camera and we're gonna fit to window so this way you'll be able to see it when it first comes up all right and now we're gonna change the histogram on it stars are pinpoint we are golden for stars so that is great yeah we're looking really good for our first image, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Yeah, you could definitely see nebulosity in this image, and that's really cool. So that's going to turn out really well. And if we can keep it like this, I'm satisfied. You could see nebulosity right here, and you can see nebulosity all throughout here. And then where I had the original image, that was right in here, and it went left. So I should be able to get this whole section and be able to stitch this one with the other one that I took. Now where the crescent is... The crescent would sit right over here on the right-hand side. So hopefully with the images I took from the crescent, should be able to stitch in with this one. So then I'll be able to have one long image from, from end to end from one, two, three. So 
hopefully this will look good. Now let me take a look and see what the Orion camera did, because that one finished. All right, so yeah, the focus is completely off on that, but that's fine because I'm gonna fix that, and as I said, I'm gonna fix that in a minute, but I wanna see what the image looks like here. Uh, we're gonna reduce it to 100% here. Not bad, that's actually not bad at all. I'm gonna increase the histogram here. Oh, that's actually quite perfect. So I'm gonna fix the, the focus. So just give me one second here. I'm going to see if I can fix the focus, so just give me one second. Okay, I moved it just a slight bit to the left. I'm hoping that has fixed the focus. I'm hoping. So give that a second. That might have moved the guider a little bit. Yes, it did. Oh, it moved the guider. I knew that I was afraid that that was going to happen. That's okay. We're just going to re-guide on it. I may have lost the image, but we're, we're, I want to see where it is, and hopefully that will change the focus. I didn't want to do it, but looking at this and how cool that looks with the nebulosity right across the right-hand side, I kind of want to get it. And considering that I reinstalled the program and it's actually running somewhat good, and we have 40% on the other one too, so now we're going to be able to do the dual imaging now, which is great. So we're doing awesome with that. So this might have moved a little bit, but ultimately I would want to see if – my guiding or if my focus is completely set and while we're waiting i'm just going to talk a little bit about this past weekend um i went to public night from the bmo which is the beaver meadow observatory from the buffalo astronomical association i went on saturday night and it was a fabulous turnout um there was between 60 and 70 people that were there uh 25 of them or so were members so the rest of them were non-members just passing by or has heard, you know, heard about it, and it was an awesome night. It was super clear. Uh, the Milky Way was gorgeous, as always. So it was super awesome to just go out there and take a look at, the, at you know, just the sky in general. So it was pretty awesome. And, you know, I got to talk to a lot of people giving them pointers, giving them exact, you know, what to do and what equipment to buy. You know, we actually got to see some of the equipment of a lot of the members that were there. So it was a, it was a really awesome night. And if anybody ever gets a chance to go out there, by all means, contact me, let me know. Um, they meet out there on every Tuesday night or Wednesday night. They're actually out there now. But I decided to stay in tonight to image here at the observatory here. And I made no mistake <laughs> as it's looking good. And I'm glad I didn't get a chance to miss this because this is going to be a great night. Yeah, so Saturday was awesome. I was, I was glad that I got out there and got to talk to some of the members and just had a great time. The schedule for the rest of the week is hot and muggy. It is not looking so good for weather. So... Tonight might be the only night that I'm going to be able to get out here. So I don't know. It, it all depends on what the weather is going to do. I like checked the clear sky chart. It's not looking so good. And we may only, again, be only out of here only one night, and that's the, tonight. Um, the weather, Wednesday is supposed to be high in 91, Thursday 90, Friday 87, and Saturday 78 with rain. That is not good. <laughs> and it's supposed to be low as 70 throughout the rest of the week. So we may not have a podcast until looking at this Sunday. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday look great next week, and that's about it. So soak it all in tonight because this is really the only night that you're going to be able to get Elliot Astor Imaging, unfortunately. But it'll be a great time to try to process all the images that we've gotten because we've gotten a ton. We have been out here a lot the last 10 or 10 to 13 days. So we got a lot to do and that's going to be great. So I may possibly do an image session, like an actual processing session on Friday, maybe Thursday. I just haven't decided yet at this point. So we may do that. And I will probably get all the images together and let's and we can take a look to see what we have gotten over the last couple of sessions. Um, 
Let's take a look. It is completely out of focus. So let me fix it. I'm going to go to the other side. All right, so I turned it the other way. So I'm hoping that probably got it into focus because that doesn't look good at all. So I'm hoping that probably did it. Let's go back to the other image because I bet you that probably went completely to HE double hockey stick. I'm pretty sure of it. Well, actually, not too bad. Uh, that's actually not bad at all. The bottom's looking really nice. It's looking really, really good. It's starting to really settle down. I'm going to crank, and I mean absolutely crank the temperature. Uh, we started at 22 below zero on Celsius. We're just going to absolutely just rip this. We're going to go all out tonight for the temperature. So this way, this noise is going to go away completely. Uh, we're probably going to shoot between 33 and 34 degrees Celsius, uh, mostly because it is a hot night out there. So that is a phenomenal image. You got all the nebulosity through. Actually, you know what? I don't think I have it pulled up, do I? Do I? I do. Okay, perfect. Okay, I wouldn't, wasn't sure if we did. Okay, so we got the nebulosity near Seder. That's the bright star that's sitting there. And then we have all this nebulosity that sits all throughout these stars here. And that's me touching the scope a few times. And there's not much drift. So if I don't touch it, we should be in great shape. Let me go to fit to window. Yeah, that's a pretty good image. I'm pretty impressed with that. So we should be in great shape tonight. I just don't want to touch the scope. <laughs> don't touch the guiding. Just leave it as is. Right now, we're sitting at about one arc seconds, and it's going down because it, as I touched the scope from before, so 1.01. .01. Yeah, it's about one or so. So that's pretty good. That's where I want it. So we should see what the other image is. So 10 minutes and 8 minutes are the two that we got going. So we'll be going back and forth. Apologize to everybody about the focus issue, but we have it figured out, which is great. Let me check to see how much drift there was. I'm sure there's a lot of drift, but can't be that much. No, not really. That's the left side. No, not bad. That is not bad at all. Let's go to two times and see what it looks like. Well, that's not bad. That is actually not bad at all. So we actually have two really, really good images. That's 20 minutes right now at this point. And we're halfway through our third one. We're already at 30 minutes already. So that's great. Of course, there was about 10 minutes worth of me trying to focus the Orion camera. But not bad. So it'll be a really good night, especially with the two cameras together. I may be out here till about 12.30 or so-ish, maybe almost 1, if this keeps up. And if, and if we're doing well, we might as well. Because it's looking really, really good. So I'll try to keep this broadcast somewhat short. As we got a few images that I'll be able to show everybody, which is awesome. Let me switch back to guiding so this way everybody can see. You're running at 0.61. Uh, declination is a little off. It was doing so well in the beginning, but it's definitely a lot better than the last two sessions, I'll tell you that. I think the problem was with the Pac-Man Nebula, I think the problem that we had was it was too low in the horizon. I think that was the biggest problem that we had. And it was like in the murk or the muck. And by the time it was up high enough, it was like 1.32 a.m. And I was trying to stay awake and it was the guiding was actually going pretty well. So we may have to wait till the end of July to get the Pac-Man Nebula. Right now it's sitting at about 27, 26 degrees. When I was shooting it at midnight last session, it was like at 29 degrees at like midnight. Right now it's 1051. So we're actually out here. The earliest we've been out here in weeks. Usually when I get out here, it's not until 1130 or midnight. So we are doing really well tonight. And looking at guiding, it's been pretty steady. You know, the worst that I've seen it so far is about an hour. It's at 0.8. And a few sessions ago, I would have taken 0.8 all day long because I was running at 1.2, 1.3. So we're 0.4 better for the arc seconds. Got about 100 seconds left on the Orion, and we got about 
80 seconds or 90 seconds left on the QHY. Almost there. Let me go to the Orion first because I think that actually, you want to know what? I think the QHY has got 200 seconds left. So we're going to go to the Orion first because that one's going to finish. And I think this is the, this image here will be the longest exposure I've ever used on the Orion G3. I've never gotten beyond six. So if this turns out well, then this will be the most exposed image I've ever had. I'd like to get five or six of these. All right, so we should be just about done. I'm going to change that. We That is perfect. That is absolutely gorgeous. For one image, that is beautiful. You got all the nebulosity that sits here, and you even have some that's below that's down here. That is absolutely gorgeous. So keep that going. I'm hoping that will stay exactly the same. Now where that's shooting, let me take a look and see where that's shooting compared to the QHY. I'm going to take a look and see. Oh, that one finished too. We had two at the same time. Double image time. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Oh, wow. That is absolutely gorgeous. I'm looking at this here on, I don't know if I'm, oh, I'm not showing anything. Oh, jeez. I did it again. There we go. Did it again. So there's the image there that I just saw on there of the star. And let me just present it there so then that way you can see it. Okay. I need to monitor it more often. I apologize. I don't know how long that that was like that. Let me just go to all screen here. I apologize. I wasn't thinking straight. But there's the image on the left, and then here's the image on the right. And you can see that the star did not move at all on that one. So we are doing really good in the one on the left. I'm going to have to monitor this more often to make sure that I have both screens or my screen pulled up now, if anything if you see something or if you're watching this live make sure you message me and let me know that if it's a blank screen or something i have so many windows popped up i may miss something so this way i want to make sure that one you can hear me two there's no lag and three there's something on the screen that you can see and not a blank screen uh, as, as long as you can see those three things on live, I'm happy. Um, edited, I can always edit anything out. Um, so if there's something that's not right, I can always fix it. But just make sure you let me know when I'm doing this live. I don't know when I decided to do that, when it decided to poop out. But I was checking to see the left-hand screen between images, and it the stars did not move, and it also got darker, like I said. And the stars are looking beautiful i mean i can't i can't complain with that that is absolutely perfect we are looking absolutely golden with that one on the left the one on the right yes it's noisy but it's a hot night outside so even if i crank the one on the right at 30 degrees celsius it's still a, it i was checking the weather it said it's still 80 degrees outside <laughs> so it's still 80 out and and that's that's hot so it's it's a hot hot night so it's going to affect the actual camera temperature but that's fine i'm not worried about that it's it's still looking pretty good i'm not going to complain too much about it i think what i might just do is i might just leave up entire screen throughout the entire podcast so this way i know that it's working and then i can easily just pull up my guiding software if need be, like I could just pull this up, see how guiding's going, put it between the, the two of these, and just go from there. And then if I need to find do the finder, I can pull that up too. There's a satellite. Satellite's going through. And we're still at 0.74, so we're doing really well for guiding. We are approaching, we started at 1020. So we're approaching about 50 minutes on the actual podcast itself. So I may wait till these two are done. So when this one's done and then the one on the right is done, I may end the broadcast from there. If anybody wants to join me after the podcast, they most certainly can message me or text me and let me know. 
and then I can have I can send the invite out to anybody that wants to join, and we can have like an after party. I mean, I'll be here till about one or so, so I got about another two more hours. So, if anybody wants to join me, by all means, they most certainly can. As it won't be on the broadcast, but I always have I always send out invites afterwards to see if anybody wants to join me, and if not, no big deal. So this one's got about. 50 seconds or so, and then we'll see where we are. Now, the new thing that I have been working on, I did this this afternoon, is I we now have put up something on my website, and the website, again, is www.elliot, E-L-L-I-O-T-T, hyphen, astronomy.com. And I'll put that above here so this way everybody can see it on the screen. And if you go there... I now have it streaming live. So every episode that I do, it's streaming live on there. I will also put every podcast on there so you can see it directly. That actually turned, that's even darker. That's even better. So now you can actually watch it. I just pulled it up on my phone during now to actually see, and that's why I saw that the, the screen was messed up, is that you can actually see it live. And I will post that a couple of days, you know, 24 to 36 hours prior. So that way there's a little countdown. I will also, I added that countdown on the bottom to say, okay, uh, 36 hours until the next episode. Once that's over and I edit it and get it all done, then I will put it on the bottom and then you'll be able to see it. It's actually like in a little uh, uh, scrollable box and you will see every episode in that box. And you can click on the links from there. I am still working on a subscribe button on the website. It's taking me some time. I'm trying to get it. It's not working. For some reason, I put the channel ID in there and it's giving me an error. So that's going to take me some time. I'm going to try to work on that tomorrow and see if I can get on there. So you can be able to subscribe, which means you could technically go on my website on elliotastronomy.com. And actually watch all the episodes without going to Facebook, YouTube, Google, none of that. You can just go straight to the website and watch every episode and subscribe through there. And that will automatically count towards YouTube. So I'm trying to work on my website. I got a lot done today. So hopefully that will work and I'll be able to get through that over the next 24 hours. Anybody has any questions on that, by all means, message me. Let me know. Uh, we're at 81% on this one, now 82, so we're getting there. When this image finishes, I want to see where we stand, and then I will end the broadcast from there. So we are just about there. I am going to zoom this in to take a look to see what the stars are going to do. As I said, the stars are absolutely friggin' pinpoint tonight. We are doing friggin' awesome. I don't mean to use those words, but we are the, the silent high five. Because we are just great tonight. And I hope every session's like this when I get the objects, the small objects. Because hopefully down the road, I want to try to get like objects like the little dumbbell nebula. Uh, get objects that are really, really small and faint. Galaxies I'd like to get. Um, tried the Whirlpool. As I said, I'm trying to get the Oxygen 3 sensor. I need support from everybody on that one. Uh, if you want to see that, I have to purchase it. So that might take some time. Uh, and then also the sulfur too. Uh, I also have to get an adapter for my filter wheel because I don't have an adapter for it. So I'm actually manually screwing in the filters in front of the camera every time I want to use them. So that's part of the reason why I've been using hydrogen alpha over the last few nights is because I don't feel like unscrewing it and I'm just leaving that on. So we are just about done here to look and see what we got. And it's buffering. It's just about done. Fantastic. Okay, so that is great. So I'm going to end the broadcast tonight. I want to thank everybody for watching and, and for joining me. Have a wonderful night. Bye.